a hoi toy. What is it? It's it's high, high it's hoi toy. <laughs> the hoi it's high tide. It's when the tide comes up high, you know, on the sand side. Sand like Pamico sand. This is the Pamico sand. Hoi toy on the sand side. The remote fishing communities along North Carolina's coast inherited the brogue of their English and Irish forebearers. Over the years, they also added many new words and pronunciations to the dialect. I know my uncle used to always say it, picking on me all the time, you know, when I was young and, you know. We'd be fishing, you know. He said, Come on, let's get going. It's hoi toy on the sand soil. Last night at waterfall, night moonshine, no fish. Where you put my rock wood? He said, Get her going. This here's the old spot there. You ain't been in a couple days. See, this spot here belongs to my friend Vincent. And ain't like that. Mine's a while. He done crab mine today, and there won't be much in them. A lot of times out of Raleigh and stuff, I mean, I'll go up and talk to people and they'll say, well, well, you got an Australian accent. And I'm like, no, I don't. I, you know, I got a down east, a high tide like accent. Like I told my speech teacher, I don't have a right, southern I don't have drawl. I got a high tide brogue, you That's know. It. And he said, why is a high tide brogue? And I said, you know, it's where we live. It's, it's called a high tide brogue. High tiders, yeah, I forgot about that one. <laughs> We want to talk the way we do. In order to talk the way we talk, you, have you really have ha had to have grown up here. If you're born and raised around it, you, everybody is, you know, you just, it's normal to you. It's just like anything, you know. Uh, if you're born in, uh, Japanese, you talk Japanese, you know what I mean? What what accent is that? A lot of people look at me and say, "What are you? Is that an Irish English accent?" And then the, and somebody, the two, three of them together, and then he'll look at the other other guy and say, "Yeah, I think it's more Irish English than English Irish or something," you know, like. And then, I, because I talk funny, a lot of people will say, "Well, how long have you been down here on the Outer Banks anyway?" You know. They asked me where I was from. They thought I was from overseas somewhere. And they didn't think they wanted to know if I was American. I said, yeah. So uh, they, uh, they uh, said, you talk funny. Said, you don't talk like we do. Well, they didn't talk like I did either. Yeah, people make fun of us, yeah. You hear people make fun of us. But that's all right, because we think they talk different too, so. <laughs> you get made fun of wherever you go. This is true. If they didn't like you, they wouldn't talk to you with the gym. I guess we should be very proud of it. It's nothing to... It's what you're born with, and you carry it with you all your life. Pull that pot up, and we'll flip it over, and let all the bait out, and then we'll pull pull the top out, and shake the crabs in there, and then we'll reach down and get bait, fresh bait to put back in there. And, and you know, just throw you right back. I mean, that's all it is. About 250 times a day. <laughs> the way we sound. <laughs> I don't care about changing. I don't think you could teach me over again. I wouldn't be able to understand it otherwise. <laughs> the dialogue reaches right on down. I don't think there'll ever be a time which they won't be some of it. Here, so you got to you got to drive to get it out of something other that's sunk in so deep. 
I, I can't help that, but that's the way it is. I'm proud of it today. I wouldn't take nothing in the world for it. <laughs>